Hi, I'm Fraser, and I'll be talking about a combined static checking symbolic execution tool for finding bugs in browsers and other large code bases. So obviously from the title, our goal was to find interesting security bugs in browsers. And the first problem we ran into is that browsers are some of the most heavily automatically tested code bases in existence. The statistic I find most insane is that Google fuzzes, or automatically pseudorandomly tests, its Chrome browser and other things, 24-7 on over 25,000 machines. As a result, fuzzers have found thousands of security bugs in Chrome. These fuzzers run with dynamic sanitizers attached, runtime tools that detect errors like memory corruption, uninitialized memory, and undefined behavior. In addition to the fuzzers and the dynamic sanitizers, browsers also use static tools, conceptually tools that look for buggy patterns in source code. Firefox uses Coverity and Clang and has actually started a static analysis bounty program for submitted Clang checkers that find new security bugs which naturally ties into our final bug finding topic, bug bounty programs. Both browsers run bounty programs where they pay anyone who reports exploitable bugs, and both browsers participate in the annual pwn to own hacking competition. As a result of this thorough regime, we had very little luck finding browser security bugs with our existing checking tools. Specifically, our existing static system only found a couple security bugs, which is actually in line with other results, for example, the Coverity static checker has found over 100 critical bugs in Firefox, which is great, but hasn't found a new one since 2014, which is less great. This made us think more sophisticated reasoning would help. We considered using symbolic execution, conceptually, quote, running a program over all possible paths and all possible inputs. This technique is very powerful, but also slow and complex. Trying to do full symbolic execution on the browser would take until the heat death of the universe. So we developed a new approach, combining existing techniques of static checking and under-constrained symbolic execution. To recap, conceptually, static checking looks for buggy patterns in source code, while symbolic execution runs a program or path over all possible input values. Finally, the under-constrained here means starting the symbolic execution from somewhere other than main. Our approach combines these strategies by using static analysis to cheaply identify many possible error sites, and then using symbolic execution to jump directly to those error sites to determine if they're real or not. The system requires programmers to write small static extensions and symbolic checkers to identify possible bugs. The static extensions are different from some traditional static checkers in that they're much less conservative their whole job is just to guide powerful symbolic execution to useful parts of the code base. Then symbolic execution does the heavyweight reasoning. If you want to use the tool in practice, this is the workflow. First, you provide it with an LVM IR file with the code you want to check. Then you either write or use an existing static extension that looks for some suspicious or interesting pattern in the IR. This extension outputs a number of suspicious paths within the code base. Then the user written or user provided symbolic checker tries to figure out if each suspicious path contains a bug. If the symbolic checker finds bugs, it reports them to the user. And to really understand how this works, let's walk in detail through a bug that the tool found. This bug is a high severity vulnerability in SQLite that was exploitable in the Chrome browser and has since been patched. This is the bug. The first key line is this SQLite malloc call here, which allocates some space for A. The second key line is this memset right here, which initializes A. And the problem is that the SQLite malloc takes a 32-bit argument, which means that the multiplication in the allocation is a 32-bit multiplication. In contrast, the multiplication in a standard memset is a 64-bit multiplication. This means that it's possible to craft very large inputs that will cause the 32-bit multiplication to wrap around to a small value without causing the 64-bit multiplication to wrap. This issue leads to a very small allocation size for A and a very large out-of-bounds write off of A. Now let's talk about finding this bug. 
The static extension identifies cases where there's a dependency between an object's allocation size and its index size. Just take this heuristic as a given, there's more detail in the paper. In the case of the SQLite bug, the allocation size is a function of nstat, and the index size is also a function of nstat. Since there's a dependency, obviously nstat, between these two values, the static extension is going to mark this path as interesting. The checker finds this pattern by walking through the program representation and keeping track of dependency information. We give users utilities for automatically applying their checkers to that representation. On the first line, the checker is going to match on the malloc call and note the allocation size. Here's the checker code. It pattern matches on any allocation function, like SQLite3 malloc. Then it gets the size argument to that function and saves it in an internal data structure down here. Next, we get to this memset line, and the checker is again going to match on the memset this time. It grabs the uh, index size argument here and again saves it to an internal data structure. Mechanically, as it's been walking through the path, the checker has also been keeping track of dependencies. So it only saves the index size if there's a dependency between the index size and the allocation size. Obviously, there are plenty of non-buggy cases where dependency exists, which is where the symbolic execution phase comes in. The symbolic execution has a more difficult job. It has to determine whether it's ever possible for the object's index size to be greater than its allocation size. In other words, if it's possible to craft values that lead to an out-of-bounds write. So, in this case, if it determines that nstat times 4 can be greater than nstat times 14, it should report a bug to the user. But how does it possibly do this kind of value reasoning? Well, first, it translates each line of code in the program into a logical formula like the one on this slide. Then, it feeds these constraints to something called an SMT solver, which gives back a satisfying assignment to the formula, an assignment that makes the whole thing evaluate to true. Let's say we change the formula, though. Now it includes both A and not A, so there's no possible satisfying assignment, and the SMT solver returns unsat for unsatisfiable. It's time to use this principle to find bugs. We'll take the suspicious path that the static extension flagged and then translate it to a set of constraints. Then the symbolic checker will generate constraints to try and determine if the bug, in this case, the out of bounds right, is possible. Finally, we'll query the SMT solver. If the bug is possible, the solver should give us an assignment for inputs that trigger the bug. If not, it will just return unsat. So let's do it. First, the symbolic execution engine automatically translates the first line of code into some constraints in the second line on the path, etc. Here's the symbolic engine code that does the automatic translation from LVMIR instructions to constraints. It matches on each LVM IR instruction, for example, binary operators or insert element or extract element. And let's use as an example SQLite3 malloc, which is a call. So it's going to match right here in this call case. And then we're going to go look at translate call. Translate call takes one argument. In this case, that argument is A, the thing we're mallocing, the name of A. And this whole function is written in an EDSL that we also expose to users for writing their own checkers. So the first thing we're going to do is use this get defined name EDSL function to get the logical formula for A. Then we're going to get the type of A and figure out if it's a pointer, again using DSL functions. Finally, since A is a pointer, we're going to allocate some space for A using yet another DSL function. Now that the tool has automatically generated constraints for every line of the suspicious path, here's where the symbolic checker kicks in. The symbolic checker is going to generate constraints asserting that 4 times nstat is larger than 14 times nstat, encoding an out-of-bounds write. Here's the code for the checker. E alloc size is the allocation size variable, and E index size is the index size. First, the checker uses DSL functions to get a formula for the allocation size, and then turns that size into bytes. Same deal, except a bit more math with the index size here. 
Finally, the checker uses the DSL to assert that the index size is greater than the allocation size. If this is true, we've found a bug. Now, the tool gives all these constraints to the solver. To show how this works, I'm going to run the entire checking pipeline on the function we've been looking at. It comes back with a number of errors. Here's the bug we've been looking at, which turns out to be on this series of LLVM IR blocks. And here are some example values for the variables on that path that could cause the bug to happen. The allocation size is this variable 17 right here, which is a reasonably big number. The index size is this variable 37, which turns out to be this way bigger number. So the solver says that it is indeed possible for the index size to be larger than the allocation size, and it's provided us with a case where that's true. We don't have much time left, so I'm just going to recap results. We wrote four different checkers, one of which was actually written by someone with no checker writing experience. The checkers found 51 bugs, 43 of which have been confirmed, and 18 false positives. We ended up with three groups of browser bounties, which is 17 total bugs, and four groups of CVEs, which is 18 total bugs. Our checks led to two security audits where members of a team looked through all their code for further problems. And finally, one of our bugs also caused a team to change how the Coverity checking tool was configured for their browser component. There's more detail on all of this in the paper, as well as more evaluation and a link to the code. You can email me at this address on the slide, and thanks so much for your time.